In 2009, Mike Ray was diagnosed with cancer. He was a beloved coach, father, and husband. I met Mr. Mike in probably May of um, probably May of '88 in Fayette, Mississippi. Mike and I dated three. Let's see, May, June, July. We made it like four months, and then he asked me to marry marry him, and then we got married a year and a half later. So I don't know. He's just if you if anybody knows Mike, they would understand the answer. It just I just knew he was the one. He was, he's honestly, he was my soulmate. His daughter, Maggie, has fond memories of her father. Most teenagers wouldn't call this fun or, you know, think of it to be fun, but it's how I remember my daddy. He always did spelling words with me. <laughs> and every Thursday night, I, it does not pass. I'm not a good speller. I'm terrible at spelling. To this day, I'm terrible. And that's just something that me and him did together. We were hunting, and I killed a nine point, and it was actually the last year I had killed. It was a year before he got diagnosed, I want to say, so his back was bothering him. Well, I went and got my Uncle Al, and he came and helped us get the deer out, and it was in a huge hole, so there's no way me and him could have got it out ourselves. The Kubota couldn't pull it out. It was so steep of a hill. We all got behind it, and we were all pulling it up, and it was me, my Uncle Al, and my daddy. Well, my dad fell, and it was just kind of like a, a domino effect. And I don't know, every time that my Uncle Al came around and my dad came around, we always laughed about that because it's just kind of something that we shared together. Whenever I answer this, you're going to think I'm crazy, but you have to understand that we live in Churchill. In Churchill, nothing bad happens to you. <laughs> you're in your own little bubble. You're in your own little world that... You know, nothing's going to hurt you. I had heard I had heard of cancer patients. I had heard that they, you know, okay, he's had like a little mole in his back. We'd get it off, all that kind of stuff. And so whenever my dad first got diagnosed, I was 16, 15, something like that. Um, I didn't realize how big it was, I guess. And it happened so fast that I really didn't have time to like react or anything like that. I I was shocked and I was heartbroken, but my dad put up a, like a, a huge front that, like my mom said, that you didn't know what was going on really inside. I mean, our family knew, but like every time I'd think my dad was getting really sick or anything, I would just look at him like, there's no way that guy's sick. There's no way he has cancer. And, I mean, the whole time I believed that he was going to make it through there. There was not a doubt in my mind that he wasn't going to beat this battle. And, I mean, it was a shock to me how sickly he got and how quick of a time. And I still thought that he was going to make it through. So it was really an eye-opener. I mean, you know, you can say that you saw it coming, but I honestly didn't see it coming. I... I thought that I was going to have my dad on my wedding day. I never even dreamed that he would be gone. I, I mean, I was going to have him from graduation. I was going to have him for all these memories to make with me. And he got taken away so quickly that I guess I didn't have time to react. It, it changed my world. Mike was my person. Like, I have a bad day at work. He was the one I talked to. He was, just, he was my person. <laughs> Well, I like the beach, he liked the mountains, so being the person that he was, he'd go to the beach. <laughs> we probably didn't make too many mountain trips, but just spending time together, we had, um, I always kidded him. I said, I don't know why we got married, because we did have the same interests. He liked to watch history, I liked to watch movies, I liked Lifetime, he liked History Channel, so I don't really know, but we just, just had a good time. I mean... We like to attend basketball games together. I mean, like anything the kids do, we did together. But church, I would have to say, was mainly church is hard after he died for me. That's what we love doing as a family for the church. He was a very godly person. He nothing that was gonna change his mind. It was nothing was gonna keep him from showing God through him and. I guess, that, I mean, that was advice to me, 
That was, I guess it was like kind of like an example set more than advice, I guess. I knew that I wanted to be like him. I knew right from the start, you know, that you know, I saw him in front of his friends, that he could be cool and everything like that, but yet he's a godly man. There's, an, there's a happy medium between that, and my dad was that, and I knew that I wanted to be that. In 2011, Mike lost his battle with cancer. He was loving. He was very loving and understanding. I mean, you know how, well, he might not know yet, but like, and I don't know, but raising two teen teenagers is not going to be easy, and he was always understanding of us. He always wanted to listen to us. I mean, I'm a girl. Daddies really don't want to listen to girl problems, but he always wanted to know what was going on with me. He always wanted to know how I felt about things, how my day was. He, just his personality, it was great. It was what every girl is looking for in a guy. My dad set very yeah. big standards for a guy to meet. And I mean, it's gonna be hard to fill those shoes and he left some pretty big ones. I have a really, really good friend, and she she um, gave him a guitar, uh, banjo, and she said, D, I walked into the office, and this is after probably about a year into his battle, and she said, it wasn't all about him. He wanted to know how she was doing, what she was up to, so day-to-day -day basis, it was tough with Mike, but if you didn't know him, you wouldn't know he was what was going on in his life, our life, because he didn't want you to see it. So on a day-to-day -day basis towards the end, it affects us daily. But until four or five months, our life, it changed because we had to go to Houston every six weeks. It had to go, you know, he had to have blood drawn, he had to, but he tried so hard not to affect our everyday lives. I had a lot of friends, I'm gonna start crying. Um, had a lot of people praying for me and there for me, but seeing my dad like that, it really hurt. And knowing that I wasn't going to get that back, and that really struck my home. And I never knew, like, I've never seen anybody go through cancer before. I mean, I've known people, but I never really witnessed it. And I didn't really know how to act. So it was really just a day to day thing. And I mean, I had to grow up really fast. Uh, every time they were going to Houston, I was there for Wheel. And I think what really hurt most is I knew what Wheel was missing out on. So I really hurt for Wheel more than I hurt for myself because I had a great child life. I had, my dad was there for everything that I did. I think I hurt more for Wheel than I did for myself. People are so willing to help out with whatever I need them, my family need them, Mike need it. They're all just, people are there for you. They would do anything for you. So I would just, you know, just want to thank him for being the person he was, that we didn't argue and we didn't fight and we, you know, he had morals and, you know, that we went to church together, that he helped me raise a, a godly family. You know, he just, I would just thank him and tell him how much I miss him.